Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 29 of the Weekly Discussion Show, hashtag shout, the show where we talk about anything and everything. As usual, I'll be sharing with you all my tweets of the week, and Dan here will share his Marauder tweets of the week. We'll also be diving in the world of randomness when we get to the open forum. Oh, please. Or you'll see that I am the lone walker one. And I'm Steve John C13, and we are joined by our regular guest. Some say that he is so geek that his dreams are directed by Christopher Nolan himself. And that when people thought they caught him wanking, he was actually having sex with the Invisible Woman. It's Dan the Geek King Adamson! Yeah. How are you doing, Geek? I'm cool, I'm cool. You ready for share? Of course. Uh, yeah, I hear you've got some damn good moronic tweets of the week I for have, us this week. I so have. we're going to jump straight into you know, the segment that only Dan himself can really introduce. And look, I've been a good boy. I haven't scripted it. <laughs> so, Dan, what is... This next segment? I don't know, because you haven't scripted one. But, oh, hang, on, hang on, last week when I scripted it, you were like, how dare you? Don't give me some clue beforehand, though, dude. Okay, it's something to do with Twitter. It's to take some of the best... Oh, God, just be on the show! No. Hashtag Frank Potter! No! Yeah! No. Kill the music! No! No! Kill the music! Okay, how did you get the music to play? Total music. It's the wrong show. That's total knockout. Right. Okay. okay. I, I, I know what it is. I know it, what it is. Okay. Oh, okay. So what's the next segment? You go watch. No. 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 Don't even dare play the jingle. Wrestling news. Shut up. Play it. Okay. So thank. Okay. If I whisper to you the segment, will you do it properly? Oh. Hey, 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 you can't do that within the state of New York. They buckled, actually, you can, huh? Oh, oh, alright, alright. So, what's this segment called? <laughs> and we're going to kick off. Adam, give us your first tweet of the week. This first tweet comes from at Awesome Stinson. Yes? At any given time, the urge to sing The Lying Sleeps Tonight is just a whim away. I've got a tweet. This is from Pepper Oink. If you ever heard of Pepper Pig, I hate that show, but I do like this tweet. Pepper no. Oink tweeted, "No bacon left, so I'm going to eat George." Sure. Anyone, anyone that knows that show, especially my friend Charlotte, there, they'll know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. My second tweet comes from at Funny Facts. Vegetarians love animals so much. Why do they keep wasting all of their food? <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Uh, my next one is from at Laura C A ninety one, who Dan you may have, you may have heard of. Uh, basically, if you know, you might I, 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 I might have heard of them. Yeah, well, basically, um, the, our co-host from Total Markout, Eric Von Jesme, who's appeared in this show twice, <laughs> uh, tweet uh, basically uh, was posting uh, a lot of personal stuff on Twitter today, and um, was hashtagging everything as he does, and then. Laura said to him, you know, you don't have to, like, hashtag, why don't you to use direct messages and all that shit? Eric Von Jesse basically said, "Is well, if you don't hashtag everything, what is the purpose of Twitter? She replied to Eric Von Jesse, not really, you don't need to hashtag random words, it's more like topics, work similar to headings. That's the point! Give this woman a prize! Oh. I didn't say a good prize. Alright, then she, she, her prize is to get me a beer. One single order. Now, who wouldn't want to get you a beer, Dan? <coughs> I don't know. Every time I fucking ask you, she says no. <laughs> Adam, your next tweet, please. Uh, this next tweet comes from at Sports George Cole. No, at Sports HQ. Sure, the fight was fixed. I fixed it with a right hand. That's from George Foreman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my last one here from at Rubicant86. Forget hashtag Dude Week 13. They should release Air Guitar Hero starring Heath Slater. <laughs> at I have one last final tweet. Yes. Uh, at the press well, if, it, if it's your last one, it's going to be your final one. Trick it. Sorry. At the press start. If I date a Taylor Swift, I break up with her just so I can have a song about me that isn't the Imperial March. No, Dad, I believe it's time for your moronic tweets of the week. Mm. I've got some good ones. Oh, yeah, here we go. But I have some funny ones to recover from these ones. So, because yeah. um, I'm going to name you and shame you. Damn skippy. Hit. At 
Travis <coughs> Struff91. Uh -huh. It's called the White House for a reason. Hashtag no more Obama. At Shane Kubnak, good name by the way, kid. Hope Obama loses it. Loses it's the White House for a reason. At Ralph Green underscore twenty one. Not to be racist, you already are. Yeah. But it's called the White House for a reason. That's kind of like saying not to be sexist, but bitch, get me a sandwich. At Sean Ballas. Sorry, balls ass. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with that kid. It's called the White House for a reason. Hashtag Mitt Romney 2012. And of because course, there is something wrong with that. Because the, uh, the colouring of the house is white. Not the residents. I don't know. Oh, at Bacchus underscore 34. <coughs> really couldn't think of a more imaginative name than your fucking surname and a little number. I don't know. It's called the White House for a reason. At Alex Ziegler. Indeed. Is that a German Ziegler? I gotta say, your name is fucking shank, dude. Yeah. Not to sound racist, you You're already right. are. <laughs> and if so, no offence. You already are. Not taking, kid, you racist scum. <laughs> no but drinking, kid. But it's called the White, and he quoted White, uh -huh. House for a reason. At I Code 2, or Cody Davis, see, you thought you'd get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> the White House is the White House <laughs> for a for reason. reason. Just seeing Obama isn't doing anything. Time frame a change, please. Again, oh, at Cody Whitner, yes. there's a reason why it's called the White, White House. House. Hashtag right. stupid. Hashtag nigger. This is America. Yes. Living in America. Named after a Welshman, by the way. I like to point out. No drinking game. Every single time you find I'm not racist, but, or no offence, but, on the internet, take a drink. At Parker Fresh H, or Matty Ice. Yeah. It's called the White House for a reason. Get that nigger out. Yeah. Hashtag wrongly 2012. Yeah. Is he not just uh, like a gay trying to shout on the <laughs> And finally. Oh, this is the best one, isn't it? At Jordan. Yeah. That's two N's. Yeah. You, you, you learn to spell your name. Yeah. Underscore Sue. Yes, I'm sure someone <laughs> will. Or Jordan Coley. Right. Come on, come one now. That's come one, one word. Yeah. And not come on. It's oh, called the, the White, White House, House for a reason. reason. Winky smiley face. Hashtag Team Romney. Hashtag not racist, but it's funny. Hashtag came up with that on my own. No, no that's hashtag Team Romney. So proud to have you. Hashtag not racist, but it's funny, but it's not. Yeah. Hashtag came up with that on my own. Evidently, you didn't. Yeah. And then my moronic tweets of the week. However, I have some rather intelligent ones here yeah. that might change people's minds on. Intelligent in comparison, yes. Yes. basically. So at Steve Amari, a little upset to find out that Joseph Coney and the Invisible Children weren't a progressive indie band. I like that one. <laughs> at Ty Schultz, yeah. Shivery isn't dead, you stupid bitch. <laughs> At Nacho Sarah, if diamonds are a girl's best friend, does that mean my ex is going to speak with them too? <laughs> At Lady Bird J, mm -hmm. if someone says they're only human, give them a second look. That sure does sound like something a robot would say. Yeah. At Eli Braden, pretty sure the lead actress from Precious. And a twin sister who works at every Wendy's I've ever been to. At Kendra Garden. Still haven't gotten over the fact that Pluto and Goofy are both dogs. And that the babysitter showed me his penis. At Brett, Re Brett Ryland. Mm -hmm. It's like, how many dogs do I have to murder before this girl at the park notices me? <laughs> oh dear. At Turbo Grandma. Adopting a hairless cat is like hiring a naked old man to walk around your apartment and never thank you for anything. At Chase Mitt, scientists say men who drink beer daily reduce their risk of heart attack. I know that to be a fact. As for livers, scientists said, fuck livers, and then high-fived. High-fived! <laughs>
Yeah. And finally, at Jordy Hamrick. I, that's Jordy, unfortunately, with the name Jordan, not Jordy. Mm-hmm. I always lick my lips when I see a child looking at me on the highway because they need to realise that there are bad people in this world. What a true hero. <laughs> <laughs> And those are your tweets of the week as yeah, well? My moronic tweets of the week and <laughs> my best of Twitter. Exactly. So, uh, some golden gems there from the world of Twitter. So, I'm not racist, but... Uh, nah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's always, I'm not X, but... And it's like, you know, I'm not racist, I'm not sexist or whatever. But, you know, I'm not homophobic, I'm not, but I don't want to see no fights. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not hungry, but for he does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, to give you a brief explanation of what's going to be coming next week, next week we are going to be having the hashtag shout quiz. With dragons! It was going to be this week, but basically we've decided uh, it would be better for us to push it, uh, sorry, to pull it back a week. So next week we're going to have the hashtag shout quiz. Um, uh, just to explain, these guys are going to give me their special subjects within the next few days, and then we're going to have, obviously, and if you never, if you don't know how the show works, what we do is round one. Round uh, round one is a trip, uh, kind of like not trivia sure pursuit. Sorry, not really not general knowledge round. Second round is a specialist round, which Adam will get to go first as he's the champion. <laughs> Dan like, gets his specialist round. <laughs> then the fourth round would be the picture board, where we will have twelve questions, and these guys will have no idea what any of the questions are about or what questions they'll be picking. Or they'll get just pictures, and then the final fifth round will be a mystery. Gimmick round. Who knows what I'll decide? Will I be very, very nice or very, very naughty? You'll be evil. And do not say naughty in an Indian accent. That is my job. No, I went naughty. naughty. That's not Indian. You went naughty on the line. You're not racist, but. I'm not yes, racist, sir. but I'll give you a go to say I am. <laughs> so basically that's oh, next one. So this month, so, so this week we're going to continue with our monthly theme of original characters known in the industry as OC. I don't know why I say in the industry, it just sounded right for some reason. But yes, original characters, characters of our own creation, whether we've been writing novels, writing comic books, writing short stories, writing RP, right, role plays for online role playing sites, whatever. <laughs> we have are you guys looking at breasts? Oh no. We are looking at different types of minivan. No. We're looking at legs. Indeed. Well played, sir. And so rest. We're going to be talking... <laughs> 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 the fact that there was this happy little experience. <laughs> and rest. <laughs> Can you imagine? I don't know what you're talking about. There are no breasts or yeah. legs on that picture. Yeah. Wouldn't it be awesome, right? Well, if you we imagine trying to call up a sex yeah. chat flight yeah. to fight them yeah. and sold the business to India. <laughs> so like, hello, welcome to the same and you can't understand what the same. I'm sorry, what are you doing with us? <laughs> where what? So I'm anyway, sorry. it's it's going to cost me a subscription card. Right. So so far in our original characters theme of the month, uh, we have looked at uh, Dan's characters of um, was it Norma's no, Norma? Norman Smith is normal. normal. We've also looked at... at Bruce diff- Monsoon is strong. Yes, Bruce Monsoon is strong. Basically, from this series of... Uh, is. Uh, so, yeah. Basically, the Is series. Mm-hmm. Adam, we've looked at your character. The first one was, what, Dex? Uh, so Walker. Walker. Wait, Walker. Walker. And then, uh, it was Walker, then uh, Karma. Karma, right? Karma, Karma, Karma. And so far, we've looked at uh, my character of Telmoret, and we've looked at Steve Jones, the Wandering Angel, this week, ladies and gentlemen, we've got another three characters to discuss. And uh, like always, if you have any original characters you'd like to share with us, any concept art, any short stories, send them our way, send links if you've got them, and we'll plug them on the show if you want pe- more people to look at them. If you want if, if you want us to pay very close attention, include breasts. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Breasts and fajitas oh, are... Oh, breasts made of fajitas. We'll do chicken, yeah, they're chicken breasts, but you know, you don't want... <laughs> <laughs> yes! So anyway... Enough of this talk. Enough of this talk of movies and for There's never enough talk of movies. We'll talk about them later, after the show. Oh, damn! We don't want. We don't want blip to get our cases again. Oh uh, no! They can't buy boobs. They can claim whatever. They can claim that I am some form of. You can get boobs on YouTube. They can claim I am some form of. You know, freedom fighter. They can claim that Dan. So anyway, Dan. I was with Frank. I know you were. Yeah, but you were boring. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. Well, okay, <laughs> anyway, Dan, your character this week from the S series, I assume. Shut up. Yes. Uh, who's your character from the S series? Felicia Collins is fast. Felicia Collins is now. This was the love interest of yeah. most people, wasn't it? She's, Especially of Norman is normal. Is Norm? Is Norman Smith's uh, love interest? Norman Smith is normal. Um, right. Essentially, Felicia is quite a, 
a normal chip. Although you don't hear a talk at all. You never hear a talk. Until the last page. Interesting. Where it's like the last panel when she says two sentences. That's to take us to the character. So I want to give herself a challenge. Uh, essentially, she has super speed. Right. And, and you know, it's the one thing that Norman's like, says that she can do no wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's the one, but that, of course she does it well. And, yeah. Um, because that's the thing, because Norman's character, as he said, was the one that would go around pointing out why all these powers were ridiculous, but when yeah. it came to hers, his reaction was? Of course, well, she's amazing. <laughs> no, she does no wrong. <laughs> she could, of course she does it well. Yeah. And then, uh, but she's, you know, she's small, uh, buxom, mm. you know, um, Short skirt, fishnets, um, army style boots. My apologies for the hissing, I'm just opening up a drink. I will tell you who it is because we're not sponsored. It's Coca Cola. <coughs> or Pepsi. Or Pepsi, or Fanta, or 7 Up, or Sprite. Uh, it, it, it's it, not Dr. Pepper, though. What's the worst that happened? Well, we've got the show, haven't we? <laughs> but, um, you know, she's one of those ones. No, she, she wears a corset, but she wears a shirt over the top, like a, a, a loose shirt over the top. Mm-hmm. Purple hair. Um, it's quite a like, boyish in attitude. Mm-hmm. It's a huge comic book fan. Aye. And um, is a, like, a huge action movie fan as well. Because she likes things that better slow down to her perspective. Um, but the, main, the only time you really see her is at the end of Norman's book. Mm-hmm. And it, like throughout her book, where she's and probably because it's in her book, you're following her over like a week, week or cu- couple of week period, and she looks bored, and she's like she's going to the university, and she looks bored, and she's in university because she everything's got to be slowed down, she can't speed round everywhere, and then like when she goes to work, she's got to slow down, so she's got you know she's and she's so she everything looks bored, you don't hear a word off her the whole time, so you see her going through the stages, and then finally she gets. So like because you you're about six months after Norman's book, mm-hmm. and it's like her birthday, and she goes to the pub called the uh, Pit of Hades, mm-hmm. and uh, she goes in the pub, and there's a surprise party for her, and all these presents and that. And you see each one of them get like the main groups of five, the five lads and uh, four lads and her, and they've all got their hands out with different presents. And you see like no, you see like um, Norman sitting next to her, he's all shy and whatnot. Because at this point they've started a relationship, but he's still waiting for the penny to drop. Mm-hmm. And then you get to um, like you see, you see Jack, who's got uh, I believe mean, Jack's with fer- got pheromones. That's his power. Oh, um, so you can any basically, and some and he doesn't realise when they're set off either. He has to, he's, he's consistently setting them off by mistake, so he gets in trouble for that all the freaking time. Yeah, <laughs> and. Um, He's, but like so, he, so he's given her a present, and then you see Dave, whose power is that he can have the ability to show nightmares or dreams. But he likes to choose nightmares to scare people because he's that type of guy. Mm. He just likes to scare people. And he's consistently scaring Norman. That's the thing. You hide around the corner and jump out and scare Norman with his nightmare. And to which point Norman goes every time, <laughs> just once. I want a dream. At which point, you know, not so subtly, police will try it. Walks past. Yeah. And he goes red, and, and uh, Dave goes, don't have to show you that, do I? Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, so he, he, they give a present, and then Mont- uh, Brutus has given her a big pile of DVDs, and that is like a big smile on his face, and he's all very flirty with her, which knowing that what's going on and that, and just winding Norman up, which point Norman leaves. Yeah, so they, uh, he leaves and gives a wink and whatnot, and then Norman gives her, just, then you, you don't see it until later on. But it's like this ticket to uh, Comic Con in America. Yeah. And I changed the locations and whatnot. But it's this ticket to Comic Con and she's like dead happy and whatnot and she hugs him and whatnot. We get back and then she and we get we, we cut to about a week later where he's they they that will go away, but she's whizzing around the whole town trying to get everything sorted. Where he hands her a letter and the letter reveals that she's won a, 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 the VIP prize and Therefore, they'll be flying her out first class, and she's got all the access to anything she wants to go to, and all that. And well, that gets her so hi- hyper that she inst- like Norman. She didn't know she had, she hadn't applied for it. Norman had done it like for her. So next, thing you know, you see the, the panel I wrote out is the panel is um, she's reading the paper. You see the winner of it. You see it signed and whatnot. Then you see Norman going, like looking, going, what's going on, what's going on, and everyone else speaks in it, but she doesn't. 
Mm-hmm. Although I think they might try to get it so get it so they don't speak a lot. Yeah. So it's like quite a silent book when you're reading it. Yeah. And then uh, the panel comes down and she got the, it just covers comes down to just her eyes and you see this mischievous little look in her eye. Next thing you know, it cuts to you know gratuitous gratuitous um, the scene of a you know your whole chick in underwear for a comic book. Yeah. Next thing you know, it's implied they've had sex and then it's compl- and the next panel is that them they're, they're lying in bed and. No one goes, well, we best be off then. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's quite shit. Well, oh, well, well, we best be off then. <laughs> then, next thing you know, you've got uh, Felicia, you know, z- z- zoomed back in and she's dressed up, ready to go, and Norman's still putting the socks on. Yeah. <laughs> she's ready to go, let's go. And then you see them enter Comic Con and you see them, and she meets her favourite actor and that. And then at the end, you see her in a counselling, a uh, counsellor. Mm. And the counsellor goes, well, Felicia, how's life been over the last couple of weeks since we've seen you? And that's the only line she says. Well, she goes, "How's life been?" And then you get a like you cut to a, like a close up of her face, and she's smiling. Mm-hmm. And she goes, "Life's been fucking awesome." <laughs> and that's like the only line she has in the whole thing. You know, the character it was, it was a. I wanted to do this female one, yeah, but I didn't want to make it you know this over strong one, Wonder Woman style. I didn't want to make it this you know. Why she got no power that's a physical attribute like Jean Grey, like originally, or you know, why she got a suit, why there'll be some mental and all that, and why does she look like a typical comic book? But well, she doesn't, she's not seven, seven foot and she's not Amazonian, and she's she, yeah. you know, she's she's five five, big, you know, she's got decent fur and she's got curves for her body that would look proportionate, yeah. It's like, yeah, that's what you that's what you get when you're there for a comic book. And then they, they, that then was a task of, well, how do you make her speak? And that was stumping me. So I went, how about I don't make the comic speak at all? Yeah. And that was a harder challenge to like, because yeah. usually in a comic, when you read a comic, it's most of things, it's, it's dialogue. If you don't see it, mm-hmm. it's told, told to you. So I was yeah. like, well, let's fucking see it. Did, it was a challenge, but I did. I got a decent story out of it. Okay. Um, a question I haven't asked out of all this is if, okay, so ask three for all characters, and we'll all answer this question. If you have the chance to have it as an animated feature or uh, or a live action movie, would you take the opportunity to have it produced as one of those, or would you stick it just to comic book? Oh, animated in a heartbeat. Animated. Yeah. So, would you have any voice actors? That I mean, I could even actually I could see through either. My like yeah. the one I've got would be quite you, cool. Like, would you be looking at something near Scott Pilgrim kind of stylish for that, or, um, or maybe actually, Kick-Ass? Or? It'd probably be more towards Kick-Ass. There'd be a lot of elements of Scott Pilgrim, particularly if it was the main book, the mm-hmm. first book. It was the focus was Norman. Okay. Then it would be very Scott Pilgrim esque. Oh, but which one would you put? Like animated or the? Uh, oh, um, I mean, it, the first thing kind of leads it lends itself to animated in the aspect of the power is always not cool if it's an animated project. Because yeah. well, I would be the I, is series. Yeah. you would want them all done the same way, surely. Yeah, and I, but I would, but you could do a live action movie and incorporate all the stories. Mm. And which it, one do you think you'd prefer? Like you have to make a decision. I gotta say, I probably prefer live action. Live action. I'd like to, you know, to see the people, have a yeah. chance to cast the people, have a chance to, you know, to do a lot. Of I mean, cool do you things. have any ideas for either like Norman or Bruce or? Uh, um, obviously, you may not have an idea for all of them. But um, it's just been posed to you. Yeah, but well, Norman's um, one that I don't know about. <laughs> Norman would be an interesting one. I mean, he could go the way of an Adam Brody from the OC. You know the geek on that or he could go the way of um, uh, Aaron Johnson who played Kick-Ass yeah um, or even to, to a Jay Bruchel from uh, Knocked Up um, she's out of my league goon you know is she the one in June uh, Juno no oh, no sorry yes yeah. I hate like, um, I say someone else yeah he, so he could go right. either way like that so yeah there's a few uh, he would be one um I mean, the problem with Monsoon is that he has to be a big, you know, muscular guy who long flowing hair and gorilla type uh, feel to him. So a lot of the time you'd have to probably get, you get a guy who looked the part and couldn't act or a guy who act, could act and couldn't look the part, you know? Of course you could Darth Vader. But what, yeah. what, what, I mean, what kind of speech would you be looking at though? Speech would be, I mean, he comes off slow, mm-hmm. but he is intelligent. It's just that, you know, sometimes he's a bit, uh... But, like, was he Caucasian, or...? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they were all Caucasian, because it was all in a Caucasian, um... But how, how old? He's 23, 24. Yeah. Uh, 
Luke Gallows is a bit of a stretch. <laughs> yeah. uh, what about someone like Hugh Morris? Mm. Can you not get in, like, I mean, you know, makeup is an amazing thing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, well, uh, he's more, he's like very muscular. Mm. So you're looking at more of a, to go the complete uh, wrestling route, you're looking at a Dave Batista or a Ryback physique. I'll mention something after the show. About that, <laughs> or at least you would, uh, back in the day, would have been a Dave Batista look. I know he's slimmed down a bit now. Yes, he, he actually recently debuted in MMA. Yeah. He's so actually, yeah, it'd be, it was uh, actually a pretty boring fight, but he did what needed to be done. I haven't seen it, don't need to see it. Yeah, and <laughs> donated all of his winnings to charity. I did, he, I did read that, yeah. Because he said he's got enough money. So yeah. he <laughs> He's still a dick, but I was going to Oh, yeah, uh, okay. Uh, for, so what about Felicia? Felicia? Um, the fanboy in me. Yeah. There's like, you know, scream, is screaming out like a name. Which is? Because, but I don't think it worked for the past. That's a problem. Fair the enough. fanboy in me is screaming at me, going Emma Stone. Why? Because we love Emma Stone. Who <laughs> and was Emma Stone? Emma Stone was in uh, Superbad. Was in the new played Gwen Stacy in the new Spider Man. The new Spider Man was in uh, Crazy Stupid Love. Easy A. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, and the uh, Reddit. Uh, is it the main last from Easy? Yeah. Oh yeah. But it's like she's. It's how, a, how old is she again? She's about as right age. They're 23, 24. Oh, about um, the character. And the characters. Well, the characters are all that age because they're all oh, friends and grew up together. From, like, um, the only ones who didn't grow up, like, there was three. The main three, the ones I mentioned already, Felicia, Brutus, and Norman, grew up from school onwards. Yeah, okay. Uh, then they went to. Because I said this in a, uh, like a, a futuristic city, but I didn't depict where the city was. In my mind, it was just some city, and if I were to do, and in my mind, so it, it could have worked in like the UK, it could have worked in America, but if I was doing live action, I'd say in America because you've got yeah. more choices. So it'd be like, um, you know, and then so they went to, they met at the college, or um, they met at, uh, yeah. they met at college, or they met somewhere else, and um, I think it was college or sixth form over here. It'd be for, like, they were freshmen in university in America, yeah. or what they call college. And uh, so they met there, and that's when they met Dave and they met uh, Jack, and that's when they, you know, the form, bonds formed. They've, and they've roughly been out of college or uni or whatever for about, well, you, well, you leave when you're about 22, don't you? Yeah. So you have been about a year, year and a half. But like Emma Stone's the one that screams out at me, but, you know, I, I'd probably go for, an, see, a few of them I'd go for uncast. He couldn't find a Dave and he couldn't find a Jack. Because Jack leads himself very much to a Johnny Depp type yeah. actor. But, but Johnny is far too old, you know? Well, that's also a thing about for next week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't, don't have a thing about that now, actually. Your character for this week. No, I believe. Excuse me. I believe. I <laughs> think <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, That's all I'm learning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember last week I said I was going to talk about Spectre, seeing the Spectre was. Uh, the reasoning for the entire comic coming about. Yeah. Um, the character of Spectre is one that I wrote when just kind of figuring out how I could make future storylines happen. Uh-huh. And uh, how to do that well with science, of course. With science! Yes. Um, it was the kind of idea in the comic book, I, I was going for whether I was going to do like a supernatural kind of thing or... Uh, like a... Like a mystic- scientific. Yeah, my mystical. And then I went, no, no, no. I'm bringing science. Okay. So I'm bringing science. Yeah. I'm bringing science, bitch! I brought science! <laughs> but the idea was that uh, Spectre was... So some people try to bring sexy back, you want to bring science back. Hey, science can't be sexy. I'm bringing science back. Don't knock over my test you rack. What? It rhymed. Fuck you. Anyway, the point <laughs> is... The point is... Um, Spectre was a man in his kind of middle age, just look at about... Uh, 17 years. <laughs> so, uh, well, I say middle age, he was... He middle age is 1700s. <laughs> I know, I don't know why I said 1700s. He wasn't, he wasn't old, but he was, he wasn't young, I suppose. He was a hell of a timeline, though. <laughs> um, he was born in the middle of it. He was quite a... He was quite an ordinary <laughs> bloke. He was a professor of physics. Um, yeah. Before he lost his job due to like he messy divorce and started drinking and he lost his job as a professor of physics. 
um, he had these massive conditions of self-worth and he could never quite achieve what he wanted. He could never like feel good about himself. Oh. So, um, poor thing. Basically, sounds like me. After is he alone as well? Uh, no, he did have a, a strange son. No, 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 he alone. Oh, he had a messy divorce. So he, it wasn't that no one lasted. So divorce. yeah, even he had someone. Yeah. It wasn't that he like lasted didn't like him. He was just he wasn't interested. He believed that. He believed that because he didn't feel good about his work, he could never feel good about another person. Right. So what oh, happened he was is a um, scientist. What happened was uh, he went, went and to the local scrap heap, got some metal and some wire, and in his shed, in a drunken haze, began designing a teleporter. As you do when you're drunk. And well, he was, metal and he was a professor of physics, uh, physics who wanted I've to... I've never done that. <laughs> you're not a professor of physics. Who, he wanted to feel... I was like, once. He wanted to feel proud about himself, so he decided like become the world's first at something. So... He created some form of teleporter that he got working to do. He basically had to like, steal the street's power to use it. Oh, is he doing? But he gave it a go. <laughs> the only problem was he was drunk when he made it. So did drunk it. science! Yeah, it's on drunk, drunk science! science. Oh, whoa! Woo! The point was, um, it yeah. worked in a way. I mean, as we know, teleportation works in a simple atom that you destroy your atoms and re collect them and reassign them in a various location. I do I that. Thought, I thought it was like converting it into a separate form of energy and then rematerialize them into material. No, you make a copy of one and then it destroys the other. Wow. Well, here's, what, I happened. Do that. here's what happened. Science taught by Sheldon. His, his molecular structure, <laughs> molecular structure, um, was changed to the point where it could be transported, but it just shorted. So it didn't work. So he kind of existed in the state of midway atomic density. So he became... Um, 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 what? So he was somewhere between energy and matter. Yeah. Right. He was, in essence, a ghost. A living ghost. And now you got me. He, had the, he has, of course, with that... Not even playing the part there, folks. <laughs> with that... Was completely lost. With that, he had the ability to pass through solid objects and solid matter. <laughs> However... True. If he focused, he did have the ability to like be able to grasp things and increase the tone. I see a job. I'm gonna give you a minute, man. No, no, you're fine. Right. I have listened. Um, but yeah, he was kind uh, of. It made me laugh too. He passed through solid objects. <laughs> <laughs> he had the ability to grasp things and all that kind of stuff. But with that, he was able to like um, possess people. He could like literally. He could like fly into people and take control of them by focusing all his right. energy. On actually so it's not possession, it's just basically also like wearing the suit. Yeah. It's rape. It's like, not rape. There is no sexual intercourse involved in the making of this comic. It's which is why, which is what most comics Remember, he's a scientist. We know all that. Oh, it was surprise sex. My it's point is... Sex. It's no surprise. It's not rape if you say surprise. So, his powers... It's also not rape <laughs> if you don't fuck them. His powers incorporate... Dude! <laughs> what? His powers incorporated. Yes. Material possession. Yes. Uh, the ability oh. to reduce or increase his atomic density to human form or spectre form. Right. Right. Increase my atomic density. So he, he, so he could basically go between the two yeah. extremes of the material yeah. uh, strain yeah. by will alone. Yeah, in decreasing his atomic density, he could levitate. He could reduce his. Of course, weight. because it become lighter. Yeah. Um, I, I increase my atomic density. And while well, you're looking at Emma Stone, no, Scott Johansson. Alright. <laughs> and when he was, and when he would go back being physical, he, would, he still yeah. took up uh, um, the, uh, physics, of my apologies. He managed to create a ray that would turn solid objects into liquid. Like, not liquid as in, like, melting them, but would create them like, into, like, a gelatinous kind of thing. So he basically talked about breaking down the atomic bonds to yeah. like, keep them together. Yeah, so well, he took that and called it the ectoplasm ray. So, well, he, good. so he generally took on the mantle of being Spectre. <laughs> and yeah. that is the character. Now, the problem was, Spectre got lonely. Because he didn't know of any of the other villains. He didn't, like, um, Cleanser, who I'll talk about next week, wasn't around. Right. No, there was, he didn't have so any. So basically, at this point in the story, it's basically him and that's it. Yeah. So, okay. he does what any rational person does. He reads up on the parallel dimension theory and creates a dimension cutter. To cut into another dimension. Yeah, well, yeah of course you, you do that. Yeah, come on, he's been crazy enough to go this far. 
<laughs> so yeah, but yeah, he cre- and that is where all the different villains in the book come from because he created yeah he created a dimension cutter in which different dimensions exist. Um, Walker comes from a, a dimension in which gods exist. Yeah. Um, you uh, cleanser, he comes from the same uh, dimension, but there is also people like um. Uh, so Slender- basically, actually, Slenderman makes an appearance at one point. So ultimately. It's Spectre's fault. Yes. Because he's the one that opens the door in the first yeah, place. He is he is the Lex Luthor to Superman, the, the Joker to Batman. He is the original villain. Yeah, but he wasn't trying to be the villain. Though. Um the Joker wasn't the original villain to Batman. Catwoman was. Huh? Actually Joe Chill technically. Well, you learn something new every day. Okay. So yeah, uh, but, okay, well if you so, cause, so I assume these are all like different are these like the same kind of series, or is it the same banner, um, or are they separate? Uh, they are the same series. Uh, right. Part of the Karma series, they just yeah. So my question is, I don't really wonder when he says Karma series, wants to go Karma <laughs> <laughs> You have no idea how many times I did that one right. Well, this right, so would these would be if they was all to be made into a movie, whether it be a live action or I don't know, would they be doing in the same format for each one, or could they be done separately <laughs> for different stories? There are some stories that would have to be done animated. And there are some that could be done live action. So would you have them all done animated? Um, actually, I reckon I probably would to begin with. But I might, in the future, have them adapted to. You so know what you could do? You, they always talk about doing for the um, what's this, the Stephen King books? There's a huge collection you did. I think it's Stephen King anyway. I don't know Something the Tower. I don't know. Something Tower books. Um, is someone going to help me now? Um, he did... Um, I believe it's Stephen King anyway, but there was a talk of um, the Dark Earth, the Dark Tower series. Yep. Talk of doing live action films, web programs, um, and but as well as that of doing TV, uh, live action TV and comic, uh, sorry, animated TV as well. Yeah. So you could always mix it up, you know, certain stories could be told in a certain way. Yep. So, um, what kind of animation style would you go for? Um, uh, uh, I mean, is there any in particular, or is it something that you probably want more thought and time over? I you can answer that next week, dude. Honestly, I don't know enough about animation to tell you. Well, I'm not talking about, like, specific artists, but, like, comparative to any show that you've seen. Uh, looking at Batman, the animated series kind of style. So, Paul Dini, Bruce Timm. Yeah. Points, dude. Points. <laughs> All right. Well, and points mean prizes. No, this game is over. Okay. Well, uh, my character this week is a familiar name. Uh, you might remember the last week. Oh no, Jesus! No. When I say familiar, Man, that's not quite what I mean. Lee. Allah. No. Buddha. Can we stop guessing names? Hindu. The prophet. George of he is. George what? Shut your face, sir. George Carlin. Not George Carlin. Anyway, you might remember the last. He's a familiar week. name, man. Remember last week, I spoke of uh, Steve Jones, the Wonder Angel, and, no. I, and I said, anyway, and I said there were actually two Steve Jones, the wrestler and the angel, and I'm you're going to put your foot right through your laptop there. Um, so it's a bit of a mess in the studio, but what's no, new? It's a bit of a mess in my part of the studio. But anyway, um, and this week I'm going to talk about the wrestler of Steve Jones. Um, Steve Jones, uh, if you don't know this, uh, this thing called e-fetting. It's, you know, online you have various role-play scenarios. You have a uh, Twilight role-play, um, vampire role-plays. RPGs. Yeah, RPGs, but where they are text-based you're, or forum-based, you type out replies and stories to play rather than playing a game as a character. It's, you know, so it's more text-based role-play. And there's a wrestling one, and it's called e-fetting. It started roughly 1996. Some argue 1994, uh, but I disagree with that. Uh, 1996, where it was... Uh, because 1994, the internet really wasn't kicking around that public... <coughs> to a that's public a scale. It wasn't really until 1996 that the internet was becoming more widely available, and e-fetting didn't start with the birth of the internet. Um, e-fetting pretty much started as, a, uh, as uh, an email-based uh, thing where people would email each other what the wrestlers do, and it would be headed by someone. And then we got the creation of forums, which came around, I would argue, 1998, 
um, maybe 1999. Um, so that's when forums, uh, forums started being created, and then the forum-based uh, uh, Ethernet came out, and it was a revolution for the Ethernet uh, sector. So um, I first started playing Spike Dudley, Jim Ross, Jenkin Lawler, uh, Rhino, all these different pe- you know, people. People I didn't even know who they were. You know, they, they were just because back then you would have a list of wrestlers, and if they weren't taken, you could have that wrestler. And I joined like as the last person in this company that had these people available. Uh, the first time I joined Dunny Fed as an independent or an original character, I played a character called Rocky Stevens, or Rocky the Survivor Stevens, and he had a son called Steve the Warrior Jones, which didn't really make a big impact appearance until the year 2000. So, this character I'm talking about is Steve the Warrior Jones. Uh, here's his backstory. He's son of Rocky Survivor Stevie, uh, uh, Rocky the Survivor Stevens, a huge... Uh, Legend in the wrestling business at this point in the EFED world. Um, he's wrestling over in Texas, whilst Steve, uh, actually known as Steve Stevens, is at home with his mother, April Jones. Um, now, April Jones Stevens is her full name, but everyone knows her first was April Jones, because at this point, it turns out that Rocky Stevens is actually a bit of a twat. You know, in the wrestling world, he's like the biggest face in the business, but outside of that, he is an absolute bastard. Uh, so back home in England, you've got Steve Stevens, you've got April Jones Stevens. Um, Steve Jones, he's at school, you know, he used to be bullied, he doesn't anymore because he fights back like his father. And he's gives respect. When he goes home, he finds his mother having a heart attack in the kitchen. He runs in the kitchen and she dies in his arms. Basically, the last words being, be brave, my little warrior. Uh, a family friend, Uncle Rob Austin, comes in and starts taking care of Steve. The father doesn't want anything to do with it. So Rob, Uncle Rob Austin. Yeah. Um, so basically, Rob Austin, knowing that his father's a prick, and the father's like, oh, I don't want anything to do with it, you know, takes him around the world. Uh, Steve officially has his name changed to Steve Jones, because he just want anything to do with his father. And Rob takes him around the world, because Rob's a manager, uh, who goes with different wrestlers, as Steve goes, and he tries to learn different styles of fighting wherever he goes, because he needs to find a venting for his inner rage. And at a very early age, Rob is very surprised to see how well in control Steve is of his own emotion. Like, he seems to be able to channel his anger into better outlets. And when Rob asks him, okay, how are you managed to do this? He says, it's just what my mother always taught me. Um, so eventually when he's 16, Rob goes to, sorry, Steve Jones goes to his first wrestling show uh, where he's attacked by Carnage, who is rocking the five of Steve's greatest four, throws him off the top of a hell in the cell. Almost nearly cripples him. So years later, you know, Jones is recovered and he ends his wrestling ring for the first time. He goes to, uh, you know, just a fast forward, he doesn't really do a lot of storyline work except uh, feuding with a guy called uh, the, uh, what's it, Sean the Short Time Mills. He has a decent storyline with him, wins this championship, and with this character I was able to win. And how did you win in an third? You're given a match and you're told that that match is going to take place, say, in two weeks' time. You have until up to a certain date to post promos, if you will, cutting a promo on your opponent or try to create interesting uh, segments or stories, if you will. You usually had a limit on how many you were allowed to post. So say Bosa was allowed to post three posts because obviously if you've got one guy that could post ten in a week and the other guy could only post two because he was working, it, it, there was a way to make it fair. Yeah. And I'm a writer, so I, that's how I got my start in really in writing. And that was just awesome. You know, fair play. I mean, I... This is awesome, yeah. Uh, well, because I had a love for the wrestling business, and I had a love for creating characters, and you really weren't dealing with the world of, you know, SmackDown versus Raw games and stuff like that by that point. So I was really kicking ass with that. You know, personally, wrestling games weren't my niche. I got into them much later on, of course, uh, with my good friend Paul Crackett, um, we just, which is fun and great. But eventually, I ended up meeting up with David Kadish, who was playing Carnage, Um who, it actually, I didn't realise until a year ago that his real name isn't actually David Kadish. It was just another character name. Um, his actual real name is Randall. <laughs> so it was like, wow, okay, I can see why you call yourself David Kadish. But, um, and he brought the Carnage character back, and Carnage became the major rival of Steve Jones. So Steve the Warrior Jones and Carnage had this huge thing. The storyline was that Steve the Warrior Jones had become the owner of a company called TAC. This was actually because I took the company, I held, uh, this company used to be a guy called Roscoe. He missed being a wrestler. So he 
talked to me and a guy called uh, Lance. Oh, that's going to drive me nuts now. It was Lance someone. And mm. um, Lance said that he would be happy to be the half owner if I would own the other half. And we together we'd run this AFED together, oh. which meant updating graphics, make, deciding who wins the shows, writing up results. Because what would happen is after all the role plays were posted, when you got the deadline, the matchmakers would read the post, decide who wins, and then they would write the show. Almost as if you were writing the results of like WWE, Monday Night Raw, SmackDown. You'd write up the results as they're happening. But that would include commentating and stuff like that. So it was like a mini story as well. Um, but Lance disappeared. He just didn't. Sh- he just disappeared off the face of the earth. There was no context. So I had to take full control. So I ran the show. Then Karch came in. We did storylines where he would win half the company. We had this huge epic rivalry. And basically, how we decided to start it was Carnage would get over his mental in faculties, if you will, and become David Kadish. And David Kadish was a really good boy. And Jones took him under his wing, uh, forgiving him for what he had done to him, recognized that that was a demon within him. Uh, but then David got jealous when Steve Jones fell in love with this uh, last called Trish. Um, and they were going to get married and all that. But which brought out Carnage, and then Carnage basically destroyed his life. The Steve Jones character has transcended wrestling now, and where we are now, basically what happened is we took this character outside of wrestling. See the Warrior Jones, uh, the next time we ever see him, he's bursting into a house where his uh, wife at the time is. So his uh, daughter is, sorry. His wife at the time has uh, been raped and is with the police department. That was not my decision. That was by, uh, what's, what's the best way to put it? I had another person play my wife, obviously, because I didn't create this other wife. This was actually a friend of mine who lives up in Canada, who I won't name, um, because uh, she is awesome, but she left this a long time ago. Uh, she wrote this aspect to her character, and me and David, I'll, keep, I'll call him, kind of agreed on this, you know. We get like, okay, fair enough, we'll keep this. Jones goes to a house somewhere located in Los Angeles. And as he walks in, he finds a lot of speakers all over the place. He hears something upstairs, he runs upstairs, and there's uh, all these speakers are connected to a tape player. He presses play, and it's Carnage's voice, who is relaying this story about um, why he hates Jones so much. How Jones has everything, and yet, and how angry he is that Jones had him locked up in the asylum. You know, um, he eventually goes down the basement to find that his daughter's lying there dead, has been dead for a while, and Jones finally feels that full rage, and he can't go. And but on the tape, he can hear certain noise in the background, like construction work. Yeah, and. But wind's blowing, and he deduces that it's actually at the uh, uh, it's at the TAC HQ, which is being demolished to become the uh, new Jones headquarters. Because Steve the Warrior Jones has his own business. I'll get to that in a bit. So he goes to this HQ, where at the very top, it's uh, like a lot of the floors are obviously there because its buildings already existed. They're just converting, but there's no actual windows or anything. It's like just empty spaces, so you could easily fall off. He climbs up and he sees. Um, and he sees Carnage recording another tape. Mm-hmm. Jones goes to uh, go sneak up on him. Carnage turns around and throws shit at him, which distracts him. He then throws an office chair at him and a fire extinguisher. The chair misses. The fire extinguisher hits him, and then Carnage runs over and stabs him in the knee with a knife, which obviously has him screaming and howling. Cue some diatribe about how he's beaten Jones and he's going to take everything, including his wife. And he kind of reveals he knows where his wife's hiding. Uh, now, even though she's with the police, they know exactly he knows exactly where they're hiding. Her. And that he also reveals that uh, she know, he knows that they have a son which has been hiding away, which he does, Leo. Um, so Jones actually punches him in the face, just as uh, Carl decides he's going to carve his face off. Jones punches him in the face, punches him, staggers onto his feet. Grabs the fire extinguisher, fires it, you know, like fires the stuff at him. Carnage stumbles back as he moves near the edge. Jones grabs the chair and just flings it as hard as he can. Hits Carnage and he falls off the edge. And you just hear. And um, I like I like the eloquence of the. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> it was glorious. 
so yeah, years later, Jones is a divorced, uh, a divorced, uh, not atheist. He there, there's a bit of an odd thing where he had a bit of a relationship with a vampire. That was not my choice. But um, <laughs> he's anti-religious because he's had an argument with God, and God's basically told him to go fuck himself. Because uh, God, uh, there's an actual confrontation of sorts within prayer, where Jones is like, "You like abandon me and everything." And, God basically says, right, fuck you, and casts them aside. You know, it, it was uh, to left to the audience to decide whether it's real or whether it's all in Jones's head. Uh, but he owns Jones Security Protection, which is a, uh, a security company which goes right from the very top to you know high tech security for presidents and uh, uh, you know what you call them, uh, ambassadors and delegates. And stuff like yeah. that. All the way to, um, you know, poor class families. Oh my God, you know, the you know these criminals are after me. You know, fine, witness protection. We deal with that now. You know, privatizing. You know, security and all that jazz. And his hiring procedure. He also owns the Jones Hotel Empire. Basically, it's a hotel empire, but it's called Jones's Hotel. He has all these hotels. But his hiring policy is simple. He goes around finding people who are homeless and then trains them up to work in his own company. Um, he tries to like it, and that's why he tried to help improve the economy. Where Jones is now, um, Jones, I know, is, is runs wrestling companies again. He's back in the wrestling business. But uh, on a flight uh, to England, um, on a flight to England, <coughs> his, plane, his, plane, Sorry. Yeah, his personal assistant, uh, Mister uh, Pride, uh, drugs him, and then the next thing you know, he's waking up in a warehouse. On the news, you see Steve Jones' plane has crashed in the middle of the sea. And he finds himself looking at Mr. Pride, who's very jittery and giggly. And he basically says that, uh, oh, he's, you know, he told me to do this. You know, he told me to do this and all the jazz. Jones escapes as Pride uh, manages to set the place on fire. Um, he was trying to set fire to Jones. And there was like, look at being a warehouse, there's grease on the floor. And he accidentally, you know, not fire. When Jones escapes, he decides to go back to his family mansion in uh, England, where um, in the family cemetery, his mother's resting, his father's resting, but so is David Kaddish, because David Kaddish is the only family he had was Jones, in a way. And David Kaddish had died as well as Carnage, you know, so he felt it was right, and also to keep an eye on him. You know, he didn't believe, he wasn't, he couldn't allow himself to believe. He goes there and he finds, he digs up the grave, and he finds that the only thing that's left is a face. Yeah. the face of Carnage and so now Jones has to find out where Carnage's body is if he's still alive and what the hell's going on yeah. and that's where we are at the moment that's cool. actually a story in progress cool. now for the current sense of our tell Mar- uh, so far all of it would be animation like and I'm told I'd love that anime probably along the lines of anywhere between Trigun or Definitely not one piece. Fuck that shit. <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah, um, I like that kind of animation style. Maybe so something more like anime style. Than yeah, it. maybe Ghost in the Shell kind of style. Um, for the wrestling one, I would never want that to be made to a movie. I think that's wrestling and it's fun. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely anime because I have such a love for anime. <laughs> um, I can tell you that next week I'll probably talk about the character. Um, of Adameth, which is a work in progress with my fiance. What were you guys? You got any ideas? What you going to talk uh, about? Next I'll week? probably mention because I believe next week's our last new. Last season. one's the last. So I'll probably just bring Jack, Jack, and um, Dave. Dave and I don't know. Uh, I'll talk about cleanser. Cleanser, okay. Uh, in which case, with all that out of the way, let's uh, open the forum up, and we're just going to talk about anything and everything in the last. About half hour or so of the show. So, um, one thing I will bring up uh, is something called Group Horizon. Now, it's a course I was doing for five days a couple of weeks ago. Um, basically, the full name is the NCFE Employability <laughs> Skills Courses, some of that. And uh, Snappy. it's for a company called Group Horizon. And I severely recommend, well, I sincerely recommend that you check them out. Uh, info at group uk. <coughs> that link will be in the description of the video um, what they do is they offer a wide variety of courses for you to help you with your 
employability prospects. Um, if you're on job seeker allowance, this is for like obviously in the field in the UK. Um, if you're on job seeker allowance, you can do this for free. They don't charge. You might want to go through your job centre though. Uh, speak to your personal advisor about it. Um, we worked on CVs. I put now my CV was pretty top notch anyway. You know, because uh, not because I mean, not 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 meaning the bride. No, here's the thing. It's got nothing to do with me. Uh, my CV was put together by a member of the HR department of Durham County Council. So it wasn't me that put it together. It's not yeah. it's fuck all doing my skill, all right? That's why I can say it was pretty top notch, because I had fuck all to do with it. But um, my, cover, my cover letters weren't the right format. My, I, there was stuff in my application process that weren't quite right. And also, there was a lot of things about the CV which have been updated since this was put together. Like, um, because a lot of jobs are now going through recruitment agencies, um, like rather hiring other people to do the interview process for them. Yeah. Um, the there's kind of an agreed format <laughs> for CVs and application forms. Yeah. Uh, so they were able to basically make some minor modifications to my CV to make them top notch. And then there are some people who I was on the course with who have got no problem in saying that they improved their CV like a thousand times. Yeah. You know. Um, and the course itself, it teaches you some nice stuff. And even if you know everything, it does help you build up your confidence and help build up your communication skills. And I got a decent group of friends out of it by the end of it. Um, now, I won't name the guy who I went through, uh, out of respect for his privacy, uh, but definitely check out Group Horizon uh, if you're interested. Again, that is info at grouphorizon.co.uk uh, for email. Or visit the website, www.grouphorizon.co.uk. Check them out. I would definitely recommend it. Speak to your personal advisor if you're interested in doing the course. Uh, if you CV, if you think your CV could be better and all that jazz, ask about the NCFE level, I believe it's level one, but uh, with the NCFE uh, employability skills. Check them out. And uh, like I said, description uh, links will be in the descriptions of the video, whether it's Blip or YouTube. Anybody got anything they'd like to bring to the show? Um, I have a, a lesson in college, which probably shouldn't exist. Yeah. It's called IAG. It's a now can be lesson in which we are taught how to exist as humans. I, what's it called? IAG. IAG. I could not for the life of me tell you what IAG stands for. Basically, crap. Um, but the point is, today we were learning about... Information, advice and guidance. Yeah, that would be it. Uh, we will learn about how to write essays, because no one in my school has ever written an essay before. Never. Unless for, you know, all the literature-based lessons. Um, but the idea was, uh, we had to write an essay about any topic we wanted. Okay. And we'd, uh, read it to the class. And we'd, uh, get an assess. Yes. Uh, so I, I wrote an essay which I called The Solution to Life. Oh, God. It is possibly one of the largest rants I've ever gone on, yet one of the cleanest and safest. In which I basically stated that um, my my uh, was it um, philosophy for dealing with life, love, religion, all that kind of crap. Yeah, and uh, it basically goes as follows: um, in life, love, and religion, do the same thing. Be nice to people, love one another, keep an open mind, don't make a fuss out of it. Yeah, pretty much it, right? See. Attributed to, say, religion. Yeah. An outward display of religion. Be nice to each other. Love one another. Keep an open mind of other gods. Don't make a big fuss. Yeah. If, if everyone did that, if everyone, if every religious person did that, life would be a lot simpler for them. If they could keep an open mind about the idea of them being more than one god. Well, look, they... well, look at the people who do that anyway. I mean, yourself, Dan. My friend, Michelle. Um who I'm very complimentary of because she's uh, this incredibly nice person, excellent second talent as well. You know, um, I've got plenty of friends who are religious and they just, you know, they, they've got a problem talking about it, but they're not going to knock on your door and sell you a Bible, you know what I mean? Yeah. Watchtower. I also <laughs> then explained that um, it goes to the same in love. Yeah. Be nice to, be nice to your partner. Yeah. Love one another. Yeah. Keep an open mind. Mm -hmm. Don't make a big fuss of it. Yeah, like posting every single detail of it on Twitter. <coughs> or, <coughs> or say taking photos of yourself and putting bloody captions on them in the background and all that kind of crap. 
you know that you get these inspirational pictures. Oh, you, yeah, the along. inspiration. Yeah. I say, oh, well, I kind of do that. Yeah, yeah. feel feel free to take your inspiration and shove it up your ass. Yeah, <laughs> and that is another reason you should keep an open mind. Now, when it came, that's for all you fucking happy couples out there. Fuck the lot of you, right? Fucking seven years I've had no one in my life. But it's this thing of thank you, Mini Funk. I'm the hook deployer. Um, with with life, oh, no, no. with life, um, <laughs> the, the final thing I wrote up was life in general, and that's yeah. it. Uh, basically, this is what I boiled it down to: the meaning of life is no massive chore to find. Mm -hmm. Basically, live life until you die. <laughs> now, this isn't to be equated. <laughs> I don't know. It's so free. <laughs> and I don't mean to equate this <laughs> with your love. Because Yola makes no sense. Live life until you fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> but, so it's so that like, difficult. Oh. I mean, I mean, I grant you, I grant you, it's pretty freaking simple. It's simple for the answer to one of life's greatest questions. What's the meaning of life until you fucking die? Yes, <laughs> yeah, live life till you die. I mean, I, but that's my point. It's not that big. If you live in such a way that you are nice to people, love yourself, you love one another, you make a pretty nice impression on the world until you die, you've had an all right life. Mm. Your purpose has been to be a good person, and not in the whole kind of, you know, Dickensian mor moral way of being like, oh, where was me, I must do make money to everyone. No, just be nice to people, be happy, be lovely. Like, if you do that, and I don't, I don't agree with YOLO, I think YOLO was a good concept at first, and then got twisted by the swag generation. It's not the swag generation of a twist of like Drake who invented it. Well, didn't invent it, but he invented the term YOLO. I, I showed it, I, actually, I made it an essay, and I think you'll have to give me more. I, uh, it was uh, Y O L O W S P L I V D, which means um, you only live once uh, in stupidity, probably leading to venereal diseases. <laughs> it's not quite, it's not quite as snappy, but funnily enough, it is as catchy. <laughs> you know, here's the thing: my meaning of life is improve your own life by improving others. So basically, in order for me to improve my life, improve the quality of life for my friends, and in turn, that will improve the quality of mine. Like, for instance, I want to improve the quality of my life, right? I'll improve the quality of life for my fiance and my friends by least. being her fiance. Well, <laughs> trust me, that's ju trust me. Just be me being someone's fiance doesn't necessarily mean it's an upgrade. Sure. Uh, sometimes it's quite the opposite. But um, it's a case of like take Dan and I, right? We could we could probably take just us where? you know, no, a hypothetical situation. Right? Right. We could probably get on with our lives just fine. Should I have if a we... YOLO one? Yeah. Would Y O L O U B R Okay. You only live once unless you believe in reincarnation. <laughs> <laughs> the other, uh, the other one I had was uh, you only live, you only live once. So why are you ending it really quickly? Oh, y o l o u. No, no, no. Y o l. So y o l o u y a b. Okay. You only live once unless you you are Buddhist. <laughs> but, uh, um, but anyway, but as I was saying, right, me and Dad probably just get on just fine if we never met each other. Like, we get on that. But we've met each other, so I'm trying to prove the quality of his life. Like, you know, come on around, have a laugh, you know. We want to put a bit of comic so right, let's try to work in that. Like, I know, and I'm as much a confidant for him as he is for me. You know, Dan's been a huge help to me, especially recently in the past few weeks. But by improving each other's quality of life, we improve our own. It's the natural order thing. It's working together without sacrificing everything. It's charity without charity. It's you know when you sit, you get these people who are like, "Well, I donate all this money." You don't need that. You just need to be there. You need to help them improve quality of life. Like my my major disagreement with going to church is not that it's a religious act. It's not that it's an act of worship. It's the fact that there's an hour a week in which people are singing to a big beardy man who may or may not exist instead of going out and actually helping people, which would actually be an outward sign of faith. And look, Do you know what my major problem with churches? Boring. Yeah, it's boring as fuck. 
Because oh, they were the Catholic Church. Yeah, no, to do have the same. Yeah. It, like, we had, you know, we didn't have a bunch of black people singing gospel songs. No, yes, if you if you got go up and sang a song in yes, tune, yes, in tune, yes. and maybe with a bit of funk to it, you were you were the devil. Yeah. The, only, the only vaguely differentiating thing was which child was the target, really. I remember going out with this. Uh, I was I was actually the Christmas songs, and uh, I was doing Gloria. And the thing is, being being me, I sing it, you know, because I've got a powerful voice. In music class, I'd be like, oh, and it would, I would just be doing the same thing. And we'd all be grooving, happy, and whatever. In church, oh, people would be looking at me like, oh, yeah. and like looking at me like, how oh, dare you? you? You've got a bit of life to you. And you're like, at, you're except, actually... except my mother, because my mother would fucking say, because my mother's a far superior singer than I'll ever be, but like, not that she'll have her a minute. You know, because government, you can't say that about her sons. I think the problem is, I think yeah. the problem is, the church doesn't want anyone to actually be happy. Well, they want it's, it's, it's put best by yeah. Um, dogma. Yeah. With Phil, I can I can't remember what it is, but she got says she goes to uh, church, and she you know to worship, and they go no, you don't worship, you mourn. Yeah. Because all you get in Catholic is Catholic guilt. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's your problem. It's your fault. Your fault. It's your fault. Sorry, right? Catholics didn't crucify it. Yeah. It ain't our fault. <laughs> you know, the, the, my, my main problem is that you see more atheists spending time. Like, like me and it, right? In the hour that I could be in church, I'm usually spending it writing or talking to them. Usually, on a Sunday, in the hour, I'm actually talking to people on Facebook or friends who need help and I'm helping them. I'm usually uploading the show. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> I, I'll be sitting there just going... I'm usually having a pint. But, well, like, when you've got the choice between sitting in a drafty building, looking at... Ross Noel put, uh, explains it well. He says, like, how is sitting in a drafty old building singing about, you know, God and out with display of human effect? And, like, you are so wonderful. We really like your face. That's, that's not an outward sign of Christianity. It's an inward sign of stupidity. I think expressed by an outward well, sign of crap singing. Very, I, very much out of my character. I'm not going to make this about religion. Um, religion in itself is fine. It's fine. But look, like faith by itself is fine. It's you know uh, my problem is people who live their lives without a shred of. I mean, the, the people who do the whole YOLO thing. Like you only live once. That doesn't mean fuck any guy or you said this in an early episode YOLO doesn't mean you go and fuck any guy you want yeah. YOLO doesn't mean you sacrifice yeah. dignity for the sake of a th- don't get me wrong I believe you only live once that doesn't mean I go out cheating on my fiance with any yeah. lass that will have me and I think happens to be you know above the five on the top ten scale the most yeah. trivial thing I ever did because of YOLO I don't cheat for a was I went to a was I went? You're gonna cheat, cheat for at least a fucking nine yeah. or a ten. Yeah, no, no, that's what I'm general. But yeah, the only thing I even yeah. vaguely did because you know I only was that kind of crap. Yeah. Was I went like there's a new there's a place in Manchester which is a Greek kebab place. Yeah. I went and got myself a traditional Greek kebab. I don't like kebab. I've never eaten a kebab. I thought what well, feckish. I may as well try a kebab for once in my life. And you know what? The kebab was lovely. But the thing is, if you go around sleeping with every guy in the universe, chances are not every one of them is going to be lovely. What I'm saying is that not every guy is a Greek kebab. I know. And not every guy fully wants you to bring you a salmon. Isn't that right, Dad? I'm lost in the analogy. Essentially. Have you you just come out? No. I'm basically expressing my desire for actual kebabs. I, th- I think he's right. using the term guys, both male and female. And that sometimes like, um, some people need to be strung up on a rotating sort of thing. And basically, like, dude, I'm okay. joking. I'm joking, Blip. I love you all. No, dude. I wish you would stop that. <laughs> I will blow your kisses, Blip. I will bake you Valentine's cookies. In the terrorist. So you're going to blow up Twitter with your love. Not Twitter, Blip. <laughs> I, I don't think it... That's blip, two botches today. See, but blip, blip don't like me talking about blowing things up because I'm the... <laughs> I come from Saudi Arabia. Oh, no. Right. Oh, no. There's an edit. Not he. There's an edit punch. How you can let you... Why do you do this to me? Save him. <laughs> anyway. Take me. Shut up. <laughs> the point is... Blip think I pre-mode anarchy. 
I'm not paying Andrew Lloyd Webber all this money, all right? Okay. Hey. And how about... <laughs> anyway, anyway. Dun, 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 dun. Shut up. <laughs> My problem with YOLO is the fact that people think YOLO is a justification of any act. Like, no offence. Um, what if your my fiance comes home one day, finds out I'm in bed with some lass, and what am I supposed to go? YOLO. I'm pretty sure she was sucking and I would suck. I'm pretty sure. I want to know why you're in the room. <laughs> no, I would be told about this a few days later than sucking. Yeah. Oh, but... Yeah, you could talk a few days later. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm, this in, in, it was an information advice and guidance lesson. Does it, what does it actually taught you? Like, what, look at correction. What are they claiming that they taught you? Well, they claim they've taught me about the Veterans Society. No, they haven't. How we ecologically viable. Possibly. And how to be a better person. No, they haven't. Do you know what, do you know what, they, what no, they've actually taught me? What? That I, can come up, that I can come up with so much retarded random crap in an hour instead of doing work. Uh, hashtag shout. Yeah. Oh my god, this show is basically that. He, he, me for he you, want some, you want some information Ash advice and guidance? Here's some Not information us. advice and guidance. Number one, don't be a twat. Number two, don't be a cock. And number three, don't be that thing we can't mention on the show. A cunt. A, a terrorist. terrorist. A cunty terrorist. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm leaving that in. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Terrorism! Let's do YouTube with me a bit. I'm getting sick of it. But anyway. We love you really, but Now, well, no, moving no. away from the IAG. Yes. You know, Thank which, God. which sounds like a shit rapper. Um, we're going to move what, <laughs> our, our Tumblr page just a little bit. We're not quite in plug time yet, but I just want to talk about it. Now, Dan and I mm-hmm. are working very hard to improve the Tumblr site. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've made a page for the Finecast page. Because uh, Dan was working on our Total Markout yep. page for this other show that we do. Uh, a very good job. A damn good job. If I, if, I, if, I, if I do say so myself. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully we're going, to have a, we're going to have a much better Tumblr page for you guys. And I hope you guys check it out. Um, but what we're going to, what we'll be asking guys, if you've got anything, like absolutely anything you want to share with us, whether it be like pictures or uh, videos or links or uh, hell, if you even want to challenge us to do some fan casts, like if you've got your own fan cast challenge you want to put to any one of us or all of us, uh, yeah, just go on the Tumblr page, you know, shout the um, show dot com and plan for delays. Yes, plan for delays. for delays. Unless, unless it's down. Yeah, unless you send it to me. Yeah. So again, set that way. You know, <laughs> but um, let me. Uh, what is like the only other thing I can uh, be think about? Is it just me? Yes. Or has, or has the fascination with town died pretty much in the same week the, the interest grew? Pretty much. Because I, I was on me town. I was on me town last night for reasons beyond my understanding. You're and, a fucking moron. Yeah, and I noticed that the last time anybody touted that I follow was me, and anyone that wasn't me hasn't tweeted in months. I and I, 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 apart from the Duty Wee people, but even then, the amount of touts on the Duty Wee folk is dropping. They're um, not exactly on a fucking increase. So, what, uh, not only that, clout. Clout is on decline. I'm not just talking about the people I follow, but I've been asking a lot of people who I don't like, who I've seen mention clout. I said, well, how often do people, and they said their scores are dropping on clout because people just are going on and giving them points. Well, to be fair, I found, like, well, clout and Jeff had their clout. Well, they had, like, some form of appeal. Yeah, appeal, okay. Then we kind of realised how pointless they really were. Well, I still go on clout every day and uh, distribute points. Here's the problem with uh, tout, in my opinion. Yeah. What they did was they said, well, on YouTube you can upload videos and vlogs, right? Yeah, yeah. Why don't we just bring the size of them down in 15 seconds? Yeah, that would be... An, it wasn't interesting. What it was, was silly. Because you... It, it just got boring. It's really only good for those that have the contract with the iPhone. Yeah. And they can have internet wherever they are. Like me. Yeah. Because then you can tell <laughs> from wherever you are. Me, I can only tell from anyone that has a Wi-Fi signal I can access. And with cloud, it kind of became a thing of that people stop checking and they just got yeah. bored of it because really all you do is well done, there's your number, don't feel proud. And it's like, well, no, not really. Yeah. What's in the number? So, yeah. Clout, tell. They're well, rather useless, really. What we need now is a um, bout in which yeah. you compete with other people around the world to see who logs off the fastest. I'm going to knock your ass out. How about that? 
Let's see how that. So you just died. No, 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 that's what you could. That's what the tagline would be. <laughs> oh yeah. First, I thought you were threatening me, dude. I was like, <laughs> what, 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 what are you gonna do? You're gonna have like battles. Hey. You, what are you? Actually, what you're gonna have like download, ba- download bell. I'm gonna knock your ass out. Hey, show me. Hey, show me. Oh, man. I'm just a panda. Yeah. Well, it'd be awesome if you guys like this, you guys decide to bet on certain things, and basically uh, you bet the amount of chicken that goes in your fajitas, so you can end up having more chicken in your fajitas than anybody else. I can knock them out and just have his fajitas. Yeah, that's you will not be taking my fajitas anyway. So, I th- are, we, are we anything else? Anybody wants to cover? No, well, I've got a challenge that we can put on the to- on to shout All right. Tumblr afterwards. It's Hit us. the uh, the century. It's you name five TV shows. It's you know, a meme. Oh, so we five TV shows, memes. and then you go through them, and I'll whack them onto, and we'll whack them onto them right. chance. So definitely get you, get you guys get onto the Shout the Show uh, page, and uh, just out of curiosity, since we know we've got a little time. Before yeah, we yeah, of course. Why don't we sit, <laughs> why don't we pick the TV shows now? Okay, so, so uh, we'll start with you, boss. We'll okay. pick five TV shows. Uh, can I put them in any order? Yeah. Are we okay. just around TV shows? Essentially, they'd be best if they were actual, you yeah, know, non-resting. I'll, 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 oh, the non-wrestling shows. Yeah, because otherwise... It's gonna... oh, trust me, there'd only be one of them. Yeah, so, some of the characters... Are... <laughs> so, we do, so basically, we're fictional characters. Like, like, uh, yeah, yeah, stuff like that, yeah. So are we dealing with shows that are fictional-based? Yeah, it'd be best. For the, the best for the beam. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'll miss up. Uh, if it wasn't... Michael so Gordon. Yeah, and if I was... If I <laughs> who's was, lying everywhere. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 yeah, so if... if I think it was three of the four yeah, five yeah, yeah. If it was non-fiction-based, it would be... And I know it's loosely based Monday Night Raw because they actually are the characters to an extent. Monday Night Raw, QI, um, Hell's Kitchen, Kitchen Nightmares, and then Whose Lies It Anyway US version. So deal with purely fiction. Yeah. Uh, Bones. Bones. Uh, Justice League Unlimited. Okay. Um, Batman, the original series. Um... Dragon Ball Z. Okay. And. Hmm. I want more fictional based. I would argue. Where did I, where did I go with that one? I thought. Sonic. I thought. Uh, maybe. So, maybe a, Sonic uh, Satan. I thought maybe a legal satire I don't based know. in. Yeah, yeah, so, sorry, Satan. Boston Legal. Uh, what well, it has, I mean, Daddy, Le- uh, Daddy Craig. That's a, that's a problem. It'd be too predictable, like Danny Crane. Uh, actually, no. Just go for Sonic in general. Yeah, I just put Sonic down. Yeah, Mini Punk. Yo. Hit me with those five TV shows. Five fictional bit of shows. Uh, Black Books. Black Books. Um, after Black Books, we will go with. Black Books. Uh, Garfield. Garfield. Ooh, wow. Garfield. Garfield and Friends. Hey, Garfield. Um. Go with uh, uh, Angel. Oh, interesting. <laughs> you do a small drink like a wine. <laughs> awesome, dude. Okay, um, <laughs> next we will go with. Fraser. 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 And lastly, and uh, lastly, we will go with um, so go with I'd like a Mythbusters one, but that's a fiction. No, um, let's Jesus, uh, I can't remember all the TV shows I've watched in my life. They were all characters. Fort Bayard. Fort Bayard. Can I have Fort Bayard, dude? It's a reality based co- It's a reality based game show. Okay, Crystal Maze. Same thing, dude. Nightmare. You can have Nightmare then. Okay. That's with a K. Thank you. You and the bloody nuts and all the TV shows. Hey, he didn't make them in. Good ones, though. Yes, yeah, so I'm basically employing Google as a as a Jew. And since you know people out there and we want to know yours, is that land? Yeah, mine was Two and a Half Men, Scrubs, The Big Bang Theory, How I Met Your Mother, and Sons of Anarchy. And and also also 
give me for his. So, uh, any other questions? Dave? No, that's the, we'll get through the questions, then we'll throw them on the meme. Okay, so, is it, uh, so anything else you want to cover? No, I'm, um, I'm cool, man, you nothing to In which case, let's go into the, what's the time, everybody, what's the time? Yes, I believe we are. Okay, so, Yikes. follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash shout the show. Indeed. Follow us on Tumblr, which will be improving in the uh, days and weeks to come. Shout the show dot Tumblr dot com. Uh, the artists for all artwork for <laughs> Shout and all the Wandering Angel uh, Productions products. Cannonball dot dot com. That is C A N N O N B A W L dot 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 com. Of course, all links will be in the description whether you're watching this on Blip or YouTube. Adam on Twitter is at the Lone Walker One. That is at the Lone Walker and then the number one. Yep. Dan is at Geek King. That is G33K underscore KNG. That and is... it's not the most important thing in the world for you to follow me, but yeah. if you want to, do it. So that's uh, G number three, number three, K underscore KNG. <coughs> and then there is me. It's, me. it's at Steve Jones 313. That is S T E V G O N E S, number three, number one, number three. <coughs> we will be back of, on episode 30. Yes, episode 30. Uh, oh, special for haters. On the weekend of October 20th, October 21st. Uh, so from all of us here at Hashtag Show, I want to thank you for watching, whether it's been on Blip or YouTube. And remember to tune in next week for the one of the best discussion shows on YouTube and Blip TV. Goodbye, it, people, by the way. It we is. didn't get a chance to say goodbye individually. All right. I, I, I just thought all right. that we should all say goodbye to show our affection for the people. Well, it's goodbye from Adam. I'll feed us, Goodbye from Dan. Peace. And goodbye from me. We're all off now to make our usual weekly fajitas. Woo! Fajita! That is all from uh, join us next time on hashtag Joe.